and welcome to Journeys and Journals. Yes, we're talking art today and we're talking local history. And I'd like you to meet my guest because she knows a lot about both. Beth, welcome to Journeys and Journals. Thank you. It's and did my you pleasure. did you do all the artwork? Oh no, I'm not the artist in the family. My mother was just your, very talented. Your mother and um, I know that she'd be very excited if she were living yet. Oh. She passed away she'd when? She'd be thrilled. Um, 2000. Well, in let's. May of 2000. Um, it's almost exactly. It was May 4th. May 4th. Uh, because your family came to Southern Oregon. Why? Well, they've been coming to Southern Oregon all my life. Um, First, it was a uh, ranch out in Sunny Valley. And then um, later on, they bought property in what is now Colonial Valley. And uh, so we'd, it's just always been home away from home. If you folks were watching Journeys and Journals years and years ago, you, would, you will remember her mother and father. The name is Guth, and their given names are Ruth and Charles. Well, Charles Guth was uh, <clears throat> recommended to me as a guest for Journeys and Journals after Bobby the Bird. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Bird mm -hmm. had a TV, sh a radio show called, mm -hmm. and for children. It was called Bobby the Bird. But I had had him as my guest. He owned Bird's Market and he was telling some stories. He says, but the man you ought to meet is, <laughs> I was just at Rotary. Is that oh, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And I heard a story you'll never believe. Well, I guess let's start talking about your dad first, because he was a remarkable fella. He was the kind of person who learned how to bloom where you're planted, because Life, well, for the three of us, um, life takes its quirky turns, and you think your life's going one way, and then all of a sudden, it's something else entirely. But um, my mom and dad both, and that's where I get it, because um, we moved a lot. By the time I was 10, we'd moved 13 times. So. I just learned a lot of good basic things from them. But uh, they both came from Baltimore, Maryland. And came and, out west, huh? Oh, yeah, it was out west then. <laughs> and uh, he came out west for his dad, who uh, at that time was developing Pepsi-Cola. And uh, the first uh, Pepsi-Cola out on the west coast was in Los Angeles. And then this would be the bottling plant with the trucks and things like that. So and and he was one of the first persons to use the um, the little airplane that um, what do you call it? Sky riding. Oh, and he'd fly. Uh, or he had somebody fly up and down the beach and uh, have messages in the back, like buy Pepsi or whatever. But. Um, to advertise that way, because he'd well, seen it somewhere back east. Okay, but where's the connection with Pepsi? Where does that um, start? Through my grandfather. Well, he had she... all kinds of businesses. And, and, uh, and a brain that he wouldn't... He could, could envision things. He was quite a businessman. We ought to show his picture as he... As he we will. Um, it's a big one. And Grandpa. Oh, yeah, this is Charles Guth Sr. And uh, he was from German stock. They all came over. And uh, he was in the chocolate business first. He apprenticed through Hershey in Pennsylvania. And then he had chocolate um, stores. And they, in those days, they had like a confectionery store, bakery, and some of them had restaurants, and he had a small chain of those, and then was into loft candy. At that time, the inventor of Pepsi-Cola, this pharmacist, 
um, went bankrupt. Uh-oh. But that was good for us, bad for them. <laughs> but um, my grandfather saw the potential and he bought up all the patents and everything and was developing uh, Pepsi-Cola. The only thing was that he was using the money from Loft to do it. You mean the candy store was going to... Well, but this was a company. Loft was a company. I okay. forget the name of the restaurant chain. He was into all kind of stuff. Anyway, sort of a wheeler dealer. And um, so that eventually, I believe, that's how he lost Pepsi-Cola because well. the people that were the officers of um, Loft Candy sued him for using that money to develop the other company. But Pepsi-Cola became, I mean, the, he it lost, was bought out. It was bought out. Yeah, and, he lost the company in the lawsuits. And your family had all the stock? Of, of, no, they, he made them give it all up. My dad had sisters and he, uh, and one brother, and he made them turn in all the stock so he could use it as collateral or something in the case to pay the lawyers and everything. So when they lost the case, then what was your dad, dad was out of a job. What had your dad been doing there? He worked in the lab where they developed the chemistry of what goes into Pepsi-Cola kind of the secret formula. Wouldn't he be surprised with all this Pepsi Max and oh. the Pepsi, oh, yeah. uh, no calorie. And Splenda and, <laughs> and all these different things. But it's, it's really amazing the essences of different things and oils and of um, lemon and different things that go into Pepsi. And but uh, but with industrial espionage, that was a top secret. So my grandfather entrusted it to his son. They, uh, rather than to anybody else, but my dad worked in the lab, and then during the court case, they made him president of Pepsi-Cola. My grandfather made himself chairman of the board so he could control from behind the scenes. But uh, uh, and anyway, <laughs> but then he went on to other kinds of jobs, though, too. And, uh, and my parents worked for my grandfather in his restaurants. Hmm. They, were, they worked in Washington when they were first married. Well, I, as I said, I was in their home, mm -hmm. and I learned a little bit. And for 10 years, I've remembered almost every detail, I think. <laughs> I said, oh. They were like that. You remember talking to oh, them. Oh, bring know. the stair treads. Yeah. Oh, there's a story there. We'll go into yeah. that in a yeah. little bit. But, yeah. and the car. What about that car? Oh, I wanted so much to find pictures. If I had more time, I could dig through and find the pictures. Now, they refer to it as the Darren. I found the name of this inventor person, but there were other cars that he invented, but they weren't called the Darren. His last name was Darren. But and they didn't really look like the one that the folks had, but um, the studios, movie studios in the 30s would call up my parents and ask to borrow the car, because it was unusual. And they, I don't know what movies they used it in, they didn't tell them, but they just would use it for a while and then return it. Uh, the car is gorgeous. How many of them oh, still exist? Oh, it's very sporty, like a, I don't know, Roadster. And theirs was a, a maroon um, two-seater convertible. Well, if anybody heard him speak at Rotary, they can call and give us information. Yeah, any, <laughs> any information you have on the Darren, I like it because... Well, our libraries are closed up here, but I did check in Los Angeles to try to find if I could get a picture or something. But in this day and age, you go online and find. Well, <laughs> we're this... still in the Stone Age. We don't, we don't do that. Uh, uh, oh, this is a color picture on the back oh, side. Oh, I know. I was very precocious as a child. And this is your artwork. Oh yeah, yeah. I'd pick anything that you could write on, and even those that you weren't supposed to with crayon, lipstick, whatever I could get that made and color. And this is on one of their ships? Yeah, on one of their boats, uh-huh. That was, I think, when they were first married. They lived up in, on, um, out on Long Island, so that's probably Long Island Sound or somewhere along in there. And Later on, they had the boat on the Chesapeake Bay. We had to outrun some storms once in a while. This was later on when I was around, but... You remember that? Oh, yeah. The big waves coming up and over. Well, you could see the black clouds and the um, 
lightning and things. Um, it, the, the whole idea is so exciting to me that here's your dad where, and mom as... Uh, this was the first house um, that I came home to after I was born. They adopted me from the hospital. And uh, it was up in the Los Feliz area below the Griffith Park Observatory. I don't know if anybody's familiar with the Los Angeles area. That's where that was. And I don't know. Can I hold them up to the yeah, camera? We'll this is both of them. And, and then, then a couple of pictures of my dad. Now, this is all I could find on the spur of the moment. Your but. dad is in his uniform, Yeah, right? he was just getting out of the Army. Um, we're talking World War II, mm -hmm. right? Do you know where he served his country? He was a teacher. He was on the mainland. But um, he taught um, in artillery. So he always had a little bit of a hearing problem after that because well, the guns are so huge that it takes six men to lift the bullet. I think <laughs> they call it a charge. It's too big to be called a bullet, but it looks like one. But, um, but he was in various branches of the service and taught. Um, so he was an excellent teacher. And the whole idea, uh, he had been in, in the business of well, there it is. That's, the... That's one of them. There were different boats they had from time to time. But the cute thing is, though, they weren't really boating people. They were, you know, city kids. But he was around, or both of them were around his parents all the time. They really didn't have a social life other than business contacts, because that was his focus. So my mother and dad, they wanted him to spend the weekend with them, play cards and be their entertainment for the weekend. Well, they'd been with him all week. <laughs> so my dad, he thought, we've got to find some way to get some time, some free time on our own. So they figured boating would be perfect because they can't call us out there. <laughs> they can't get to us, you know. Um, it's not that they didn't care for him. It's just that 24-7 gets a little much. So, um, so they got the boat. And uh, my mom would pack everything in the car. And then as soon as dad hit home, off they'd go to the boat and, and leave it's called for the weekend, so escape. And the, now this is your dad's card. Yeah. You've saved some precious things here. Um, and as I so said. So handsome in his uniform. In his uniform. You, what? He's so handsome in his uniform. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, for a while, I had my mom's uniform. She was, she worked at um, Los Angeles County General Hospital during the war. I guess it's like a nurse's aide or a volunteer. So it was like a nurse's uniform, and I used to play in it when I was a kid. But uh, as an only child, would you say you had some extra privileges? Kind of. They didn't let me get away with a whole lot. <laughs> it was pretty strict. But she, she's just told me the story about locked into this boat. Well, that was rebellion from the strictness. Oh. Know. Yeah. So my aunt and uncle and my parents were trying to talk me out of the front cabin. But anyway. You had to. But I did have uh, travel opportunities, and that was good. Because um, during the summer, of course, I didn't get to see my friends, but um, we would drive back east and uh, see the relatives and stuff all the summer and then come back out again. And then um, we would take other kinds of trips. It's like when I was in elementary school, they found out that the next year we would be studying California and the missions and everything. We went to every mission in California. <laughs> I think we only missed two. But it was interesting, though, and it helped me when I was studying it. But Of course. Anyway, different opportunities well, like let's, that. Well, let's skip right forward from your father and your mother to what all this beauty is that we're surrounded with this gorgeous yeah. gown. Well, when later on in life, I found the love of my life, and I believe the Lord brought us together. Yeah. And he'd been married before. He has two children, so I have two teenage stepchildren now. But um, this wonderful artist, uh, Cynthia Bronson, over in uh, Ashland, she had a, um, 
like a booth at the Ashland Fair. It's behind the plaza stores and restaurants um, along the creek there. Mm. It's, it's really nice. They have, oh, jewelry. There's all kind of vendors back there. And I saw these dresses, and some of them were like party dresses. Some were more um, summer dresses and things like that. I've been looking for something for bridesmaids that they wouldn't burn an effigy or it would hang in the closet the rest of their lives, but something that they could wear to like a garden party or wear to something else. But she does all this freehand artwork with the birds and trees and well, now, each one was different. Now these were yeah. purchased for a wedding, mm -hmm. which got... I was the first person that had ever done that. She was surprised. Usually people buy one at a time for but themselves. Now this wedding was planned for when? Well, originally it was planned in November of, of the year six, I think. Anyway. But then I had to move it because none of my family could come. Well, then, in, then I fell, and that's why I'm on a walker. But we're using your walker today for uh, my little purple transport. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but um, I have osteoporosis, and it kind of broke everything on my left side. But I'm gradually, very gradually, getting better. But um, so, the so we moved had it to April. From November, we thought, okay, April. Well, then uh, after I was in um, acute care at Highland House for four months, I was in adult foster care for four months. Oddly enough, his sister runs it because I couldn't find one in Grants Pass, so she has hers in Central Point. And what's the name of that facility? <clears throat> Safe and Secure. Ah, just what you needed oh, when you could. Yeah, yeah. I was paranoid because I wasn't well enough to go home, and everything, and it just really nice, nice staff and other ladies and stuff. So, um, but it so was kind then, of a commute for everybody. But uh, well, he's, so then I moved it again. I thought then I moved it to August because I wouldn't have been out of foster care yet, and I thought, oh, well, these are some, by that time I had found the dresses. So, ah. so these are summery. And I thought, if we change it again, it'll have to be the following spring. So I didn't really want to wait that long. <laughs> so I no. thought, well, no matter what, <laughs> we're having it in August. So then that's when all these different crises started to happen about couldn't get a place and oh, well, but you, cakes and everything. But let's brag a little bit about this <laughs> man. Oh, that's the love of my life. That's, that's Patrick. And, and Patrick works at Harry and David's. Right. And, uh, and we were introduced by his sister and brother-in-law who go to my church. Oh, OK. Yeah. But there was just uh, something happened when we first met and shook hands. They brought him to church. It was New Year's Day. He was getting ready to leave to go back home to Southern California because he'd been up visiting his two brothers and his sister and their families. And uh, we went to breakfast after church, some of us, and uh, we just talked and talked and talked, didn't want it to end. And um, then the next thing I knew, he'd gone back to California to get out of his lease, pack up, come up here. And we just were like power dating after that. <laughs> Every three minutes, you know, we'd see each other. And uh, so the we kind of swept uh each other up our feet, yeah. Look at that. Isn't that the wedding picture? Or maybe you like this one even better. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you were doing an Eskimo kiss. Oh, yeah, that's um, what we're thinking, Eskimos, you know, because they rub noses. But anyway. Um, you have a And then a lot of, see, his brothers and brother-in-law were groomsmen, and his son was a ring bearer and a groomsman. And here's the whole thing. Oh, yeah, the, the short one's thing. me. <laughs> Yeah. It's funny how my friends and different people were on the, the left side, the shorties, and then all the Ryans are on that side, all the tall people. Um, yeah. You told me these two are... Oh, that's my stepdaughter and stepson. I don't know, do I hold it this way or... You don't have to. Anyway, just... um, that was before. She's 17 and he's 13 now. And um, on the weekends... She's very talented. She works um, at the Storm Stadium in 
Lake Elsinore. The Storm is a farm baseball team for the San Diego Padres. So she's like a, not a cheerleader, but revs up the crowd, one of them, okay. you know, for, for the games. And she just has a lot of fun. Well, now we get to this part about the dresses. Why? Oh, yeah. And how? I mean, each one is a unique work of art. It is. It's a work of art. And you coordinated the uh, colors that the uh -huh. girls would be most attractive oh, in. Oh, and, and that's another thing. I sent all the measurements to them, you know, because two were out of state and two lived here. Well, we get everybody together. Two of the dresses don't fit. Hmm. Luckily, the one, my best friend brought another dress just in case. Mm. So hers is the, that one. And then my sister-in-law moved up into that dress. She was supposed to wear this one. So oh, all of a sudden, at the last minute, there are all these I changes. Thought, oh, one more crisis, you know. And there but, is the dress on your sister-in-law. Yeah. Um, this is a local artist. And I got so excited when I saw the work that she did. Mm -hmm. And uh, you just, you yeah, know, she's not here all the time. She is also um, on the faculty at the University of Washington. So sometimes she's up oh. at Whidbey Island. Uh, but she's through the Green Sleeve Studio in Ashland. Very um, talented. Now there's a story about the cakes. Oh. Um, just the mentioning sugar-free cakes that <laughs> bakers and people, they either are dough in headlights or they wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole. Right, right. And so I just, I went to every place between Merlin and Ashland, uh, just running around like crazy. So I ended up a friend of my pastor's wife. She's one of the, she's the maid of honor. Uh, this friend of hers did cakes for the, for Sonia's daughter's graduation and they were just divine. And so she did the sugar cakes, but I had a couple of other ones made by this other girl I heard about that were sugar free because so many in my family and his family are diabetic. Ah. And, and people would say, well, they have sugar free pies. And I'm going, I don't want a wedding pie. And no, I don't want to no, be able to get no. the cake. And, and here, so even, they turned out really good. Here, even on the. Yeah the uh, shawl. Each of the dresses has a matching shawl and then she did birds and some things on that too. But the on backs here. of the dresses have other things, you know, detail too. So Now the, your whole family have a, a flair for art, for drama, for beauty. Yeah. Um, we're gonna, it's hard to even know where to pick up the rest of your story because it's well, worth two or three shows for yeah. that. Well as far as art, well, my mom was always very artistic, but um, her father, when he was a young boy in England, he and his sister and them came over from England um, to settle. Um, he went to art school when he was growing up, and um, he did the two pictures over here, the watercolors. Oh boy! Those and uh, but he was by trade, a cobbler. And in those days, you made them from scratch. I can't find it, but I have a mold thing that where he would make the shoe around the thing. You don't just go to Payless. <laughs> you can't just no. go. No, and it's not, it wasn't just shoe repair either. It was shoes from scratch. They take your measurements. Oh my. And now, so. Your family is fascinating. And the fact that they settled here, <clears throat> I heard the story about it, it, when Sunny Valley get really hot in the summer, they'd be allergic to, your mother was allergic to something. Right? She had what they call hay fever in her family. It's a genetic kind of a thing. And when we were out on the ranch, we not only had the white-faced Hereford beef cattle that we raised, but we also raised the grains and fodder to feed the cows. Well, during haying season, she just couldn't breathe. And so we would have to come into town and stay in a motel because they had air conditioning and she one, could breathe. One motel in Grants Pass had air conditioning. That yeah, remember the, the flamingo. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. and it in maybe even in the night they would she would wake the family and say, We've oh. got to go to town so I can oh, breathe. Well, 
we would know ahead after that first haying season what was going on with her. So um, otherwise she would just now these wheeze are, horribly. These are stories I've heard 10 years ago, had never, but the minute she said goth, how do you pronounce guh? Guth. Oh, guth. Guth. It's actually originally like a German Swiss word, gut, mm. and it can be with or without the H, but the English spelling uh, is guth with the H, like Guthrie. Oh, but now. Only shorter. The family, and you are Betty, who goes by Bet. Yeah, Beth. And well, now the family, they all call me Betty, but now all my friends call me Beth, so it gets a little confusing. And these are Mr. and Mrs. Patrick Ryan. Patrick Ryan. I thank you for sharing this family story. It's an incredible. Uh, you may be wondering about these. Well, tune in next time. We got a cliffhanger show here. You got to yeah. tune in for the next. <laughs> <laughs> a cliffhanger show because there's a story about every single one of these that's just, um, well, I've got to keep you. That's all there is to it. <laughs> I've got to keep you for more. Um, I will tease you yeah, just. Yeah, those are my mom's creation. She just was incredibly talented. And if you've not been across a covered bridge, may I invite you to go up to Sunny Valley, oh, your yeah, old home wonderful. place mm -hmm. where they have saved uh, a covered bridge. Mm -hmm. and they restored it. Restored it. But you so, can drive over it. It's not like some of them. I mean, it's part of the road complex. It, it's what used to be 99, I think. I mean, it was the oh. main highway north oh, and south for sure. a long time. Um, the, I'm Bernie Martin Beck, and my guest, Beth, thank you so much. It's and my pleasure. It's my, when, when I discover something so exciting, I want to share it with you. So thank you so very much for tuning in to Journeys and Journals. I'm Bernie Martin Beck saying bye for now. <laughs>